Uh, yeah, but just by putting it in perspective, uh, just what we're up against, um, you know, history's going to be made either way, so we'd like to be on the right side of it. Um, but it just comes from just the same sentiment, same phrase I was using the other day, just putting our best foot forward. Felt like game three, we had a good chance to close out that game to at least put us in a competitive spot. Um, but we waited until game four to ultimately play our best game. Um, took long enough, you know, for all of us to get to the party together. Uh, and to play for each other the way we did tonight. Um, but it's definitely um, a possibility that we can replicate it, but we understand that we're going against the same great Boston team that's going to make it tough, and we're going into their home home den, and we have another opportunity to extend the season. That's all we can ask for. So we handle our business tonight, um, but the job is, is uh, still an uphill battle, and we understand that. Did that, when he's locked in on the game and not the refs, what impact does that have on him? What impact does that have? the rest of you guys. Yeah, well, Todd, I think what we have to also account for is we're in a very physical game. So when you're getting beat up like that, you know, out there every single play down, you're going to have something to say to the refs. And um, in Luca's case, his relationship with the refs is not always the healthiest during games. And, um, you know, the referees are humans too. So we have to respect what they do. They're just a big part of this game too. It could sway either way. Um, and I think what you're seeing is, is him just taking accountability as best he can at this point in his life. And you know, he's a young person, still trying to figure it out. So I give him that grace. But also, we got to give him a little tough love where you know, we let him know and reiterate that you got to stay off the, you got to stay off those guys a little bit. Um, you know, so it, I think it's just lessons being learned. And when he is locked in like that and he's not paying attention to the rest, he is um, you know, a huge, impactful player for us and a great leader for us. So we just want him to stay consistent on that. And, um, not be too hard on himself either if he's going to do that. If he gets to tech, I mean, so be it. Uh, no one's that in front in the eye, but um, if we're trying to get back into the game and we need the refs, then there has to be a different perspective, a different approach you got to take. So sometimes a good conversation works with the refs. Sometimes eye-to-eye -eye conversation works with them, but um, when you're shit-talking them and MFing them all the time, it could get to them too. So I'm not saying that we're all perfect, but uh, we got to use everything to our advantage in a positive way. What does it mean when the coach goes out of his way to have his players back unprompted like that, like feeling that support? Um, I think it shows you how important it is to have uh, quality leaders in the locker room and somebody that's been through it, somebody that can talk through it, and also somebody that's more than willing to sacrifice themselves to take the bullets in the front of the responsibility because he knows how important it is for us to focus on the right things. We can't be focused on trying to answer all these unfair critical questions. I mean, some of them may be fair, right? But I think if you're not necessarily out there playing with us, it's going to be hard for us to connect, you know, um, if you're talking shit about one of our teammates. And we're not going to go for it. And I think that's what you're seeing, um, not just from us, but our head coach. He's dealt with his fair share of criticism from some of you guys in this room and some guys in the past. And some of you criticize him as a coach, rightfully so. Like I said, I, but I think if it goes over a certain boundary, you're going to see real humans step up and protect their brother or sister. So I think that's what you saw from Jay Kidd. I'm, I'm proud of him, and um, I have the same sentiment. And that's that's our that's our little brother right there. And he's in the finals. He's going to make mistakes, and that's why I also had that kind of peaceful sentiment about me after the game. I'm not about to go up to Luca and just say it's all your fault. That's that's not how it works in our locker room. And we dang sure don't want to start those bad habits now. I've been on teams where we've allowed the media or opinions to infiltrate what we have going on. And it has not worked out well. So I think we put our best foot forward and focus on the things we control. And we got a good thing going here. Uh, I think he made a few people eat their words in a healthy way. I'll say that in a healthy way. Um, you know, I don't want to curse up here or anything like that or get anyone into any, um, un, you know, unnecessary beef, right, between us as players and the media. But um, I think this is his first opportunity and first taste of what it's like to be on this stage and to not play up to your capabilities or to be out there towards the end of the game where every mistake is magnified. I think that's probably what I'm really referring to is when every mistake is magnified, there is going to be a response. And um, that's your guys' job to give us your criticism. And then we go home and deal with it in a healthy way, hopefully. But um, I think with Luca, I, just like I've been reiterating to the guys, just stay off of social media as best you can, man, and just enjoy the, the moment that we're in. Uh, and it's not just about making it this far, it's about figuring out the little nuances to get wins on this stage. That's what it's about for us as, as competitors, and that's where our focus should be. So he responded very well, and I expected it. Um, I think a lot of people expected it too, that have seen Luca, have known Luca, but um, you know, just didn't know how it was gonna happen. And he made some things happen tonight that I was very proud of him, and 
um, he grew. And that's what we've been talking about too since the beginning of the series is our growth and us trending in the right direction and figuring out how we get wins together as a group with all those external factors still going on. You know, how do you still lock in? How do you still focus in? How do you breathe through some of those mistakes? And I think he did a great job of that tonight. So hopefully we can um, still extend this series going into game five, but we know we still have to play our best and we have to control what we control. Uh, yeah, but just by putting it in perspective, uh, just what we're up against, um, you know, history is going to be made either way. So we'd like to be on the right side of it. Um, but it just comes from just the same sentiment, the same phrase I was using the other day, just putting our best foot forward. Felt like game three, we had a good chance to close out that game to at least put us in a competitive spot. Um, but we waited until game four to, to ultimately play our best game. Um, it took long enough, you know, for all of us to get to the party together uh, and to play for each other the way we did tonight. Uh, but it's definitely um, a possibility that we can replicate it, but we understand that we're going against the same great Boston team that's going to make it tough, and we're going into their home, home den. And, we have another opportunity to extend the season. That's all we can ask for. So we handle our business tonight, um, but the job is, is uh, still an uphill road. Um, I mean, if you're familiar with D-Live's game, then you know in high school he was shooting those threes. He was on a pretty good team, too, that uh, ended up winning a few championships together. Um, but D-Live had uh, an expanded game, sort of say, when he was in high school. Uh, it's, it's crazy. I was watching highlights not too long ago. but. When he shoots that, I have the utmost confidence. Uh, I think it surprised a lot of people in the arena because of the attempts and that he hasn't had yet. But for him to step up and shoot that shot, we needed it and uh, created a little bit more separation in the game, it eased everybody else out and um, it eased everybody else's feelings that were out there with him. And uh, when you have our, our one of our vocal leaders making a three like that, you best believe he's going to come to the bench and let everybody know he made that shot. So um, everybody was happy for him, and, and we knew it was a big shot. So um, man, more credit to him. Keep working on it, um, but I don't know if he shoots it again. But if he's open and shoots it, then we have the confidence. It hurts in a healthy way. I'll say that in a healthy way. Um, you know, I don't want to curse up here or anything like that, or give anyone into any, um, un, you know, unnecessary beef right between us as players and the media. But um, I think this is his first opportunity and first taste of what it's like to be on this stage and to not play up to your capabilities or to be out there and towards the end of the game where every mistake is magnified. Uh, I think that's probably what I'm really referring to is when every mistake is magnified, there is going to be a response. And um, that's your guys' job to give us your criticism. And then we go home and deal with it in a healthy way, hopefully. But um, I think with Luca, I, just like I've been reiterating to the guys, just stay off of social media as best you can, man. And just enjoy the, the moment that we're in. Uh, and it's not just about making it this far, it's about figuring out the little nuances to get wins on this stage. That's what it's about for us as, as competitors, and that's where our focus should be. So he responded very well, and I expected it. Um, I think a lot of people expected it too that have seen Luca, have known Luca, but um, you know, just didn't know how it was gonna happen. And he made some things happen tonight that I was very proud of him, and um, he grew. And that's what we've been talking about too since the beginning of the series is our growth and us training in the right direction and figuring out how we get wins together as a group with all those external factors still going on. You know, how do you still lock in? How do you still focus in? How do you breathe through some of those mistakes? And I think he did a great job of that tonight. So.